With Trump and Kim holding guns to each other's heads, war fever is running high. Mountain valleys close to the bristling frontier echoed to the deafening drumbeats of a war in waiting. As South Korean and US forces staged a blitzkrieg drill designed to put the fear of God into the Stalinist regime up north and defuse the dictator's nuclear ambitions. They call these war games, but as games go, the stakes are terrifyingly high. They're playing with fire, and the rhetoric is shrill. Now that the US has unsheathed its sword to kill us, we will also unsheath our sword of justice, and victory will be ours, the North Korean newscaster says calling the situation extremely dangerous. Yesterday, the North staged its own preview of the opening salvos of a war that, if it happened, could prove apocalyptic. The laughing despot has his finger on the trigger, and Pyongyang's warned its barrage of artillery could turn Seoul into a sea of fire. We didn't we strongly warn North Korea to stop any further strategic provocations. If they ignore this, we will take strong punitive measures that the North would be unable to endure. So how do you solve a problem like Korea? Well, if you ask South Koreans, the answer is very cautiously. North Korea's nuclear-armed dictator is on a short fuse. And this city, Seoul, is his target number one. Most here think containment requires great patience. What they worry about almost as much as Kim Jong-un himself is being bypassed by America and China as they argue over how best to head him off. For North and South and China too, Trump's unpredictability is as unnerving as the military buildup. President Xi Jinping spoke to him again last night and urged restraint after he'd met UN Security Council ambassadors at the White House. North Korea is a big world problem, and it's a problem we have to finally solve. Uh, people have put blindfolds on for decades, and now it's time to solve the problem. With Trump's armada, the carrier strike group, still en route to the Korean peninsula, a U.S. nuclear-powered submarine has arrived on a routine visit to the south. On board, 150 Tomahawk cruise missiles. Before dawn today, the U.S. began to deploy its new defense system, which will be able to shoot down ballistic missiles. Many South Koreans feel the very presence of the anti-missile batteries will make them a bigger target. The defense shield also angers Beijing which believes the powerful radar will allow the U.S. to spy on China. But China shares the growing angst about Kim Jong-un's rush to shrink his nuclear warhead so they'll fit inside the nose cone of a missile. This metallic sphere is meant to be just that. Experts are divided as to whether it's a mock-up and the picture's propaganda. Propaganda has been the lifeblood of the three-generation dynasty of Kims, and the queen of propaganda is Ri Chun-hee, NKTV's septuagenarian anchor. Last year, she announced North Korea had tested an H-bomb, a thousand times more powerful than plutonium or uranium devices. No one knows if this is true, but most North Koreans probably believe it. This woman has been broadcasting for a long time. She's not a mad woman. She is a normal person. Huang Songchul is a high-level defector. It's not his real name. His family is still in North Korea. South Koreans can't understand why North Koreans are so passionate in their loyalty. Many there used to believe the propaganda, but nowadays they just pretend because if they don't, the regime will kill their entire family. Fear has stopped them. Rousing patriotic songs help instill belief that the country's unassailable. Huang was a senior army officer for 18 years. 
and says the military has been brainwashed. Soldiers know nothing of the outside world. Any exposure to Western culture is blocked. When I was in the army, we were trained to believe our country is invincible. What isn't propaganda is the belief that North Korea is now making another nuclear bomb every six or seven weeks and already possesses a thousand ballistic missiles. It's an arms race against time. The world has not been on the brink like this since the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962.